what on earth are you doing? Come on, let's go. We've got a long walk ahead of us. We've got six billion kilometers to cover. So hop to it, let's go. What do you do on such a beautiful afternoon when you're at the GDC precinct? Well, lots of things you can do. You can climb the tower over there. Seems like hard work to me. Or you can go for a pleasant walk through the native bushland and explore our solar system model. We have our famous solar system walk where you can trudge all the way up to Pluto. What I'm gonna do is take you guys for a guided tour of our solar system. So we'll start off first here at the sun. Now, for obvious reasons, we can't make a model of the sun because the thing's so bloody big. It's huge. And even if we scale it down, the sun is monstrous. So we've represented the sun in a way that is a curved path through the bushland here. I'll take you for a walk, here we go. So this curved pathway around this area here is the diameter of our sun. Running around the sun. Oop, dodge a tree. So from here, where I'm standing, to all the way over there, near the gate, is the diameter of our sun. You could line up the earth from one side of the sun to the other, all the way in the distance, 110 times. And if we had a three-dimensional model of it, we could stuff in over 1.4 million Earths inside that. And that's how big our sun is. It is repulsively titanic. First thing I want to tell you about this model is there are two scales. First scale is a size scale. And of course, all the science of the planets and the diameter of the sun with this path is one scale. The second scale, is the distance scale. So we start off somewhere in the middle here of our track. So somewhere about here is the center of the sun. We've modeled this so when you walk up the solar system track you get a feel for how big it is. Now the distance scale is based on each step you take is 3.5 million kilometers long. Count them up, 3.5 million, m -m million. Okay, good. So first planet on the cards, Mercury. So, so far we've covered 58 million kilometers. If you're feeling puffed out, I'm not surprised. It's the average distance from Mercury to the sun. It takes 88 days to go once around and its day, as it spins on its axis, takes 56 Earth days. So Mercury here, it being the closest planet to the sun, you'd probably think it's the hottest. Well, it's not. The hottest planet goes to the next planet along, which we'll go to in just a minute. But Mercury here has surface temperatures on the daytime side of 325 degrees and the nighttime temperatures drop down to a very chilly minus 170. And the whole reason for that, it's got no atmosphere. No atmosphere to trap the heat in. So all the heat just bleeds off into space and it can get extremely cold. Let's go to the next one. Here we are the next one, Venus. There once was a lady called Venus whose body was the shape of a Venus here is, well, described to be the Earth's twin in size, but that's where the similarity stops. Venus is a dump. Honestly, you don't want to go there for your holidays, despite what TripAdvisor says. Venus is the hottest planet in the solar system. It's completely covered in cloud. The cloud is made of uh, sulfuric acid, not uh, water vapor like here on Earth, and has a global temperature both day and night of 485 degrees Celsius. That means it's hotter than the oven you have at home. It takes 225 days to go once around the sun, but its day is longer than its year. It takes 243 days to rotate once on its axis. The other thing that this horrible planet has is atmospheric pressure. Well, the Earth has atmospheric pressure. It's got one atmosphere at sea level, but Venus here is 90 times stronger, which means that if you were to land on the surface and get out of your ship, you'll be squashed by the pressure and then cooked at 485 degrees. Not a good way to go. Let's go to the next one. This is one of my favorites. This, of course, is planet Earth. We have now covered a distance of 150 million kilometers, 365 and a quarter days to go once around the sun. And it takes 23 hours and 57 minutes to spin once on its axis, which we call a day. So now we've reached the moon, that one right there. In fact, that thing up there, that's the real thing up there. Cool place. We've just traveled another scale. So the Earth, that thing over there, we've just traveled about 380,000 kilometers. It took the Apollo astronauts three days to go from there to here. They landed on the surface back in 1969, which was an amazing feat. This is the furthest place humans have traveled in space. We've just begun our journey into the great cosmic ocean by starting off here. 
Why haven't we been back? Well, it cost a shitload of money. But the moon is a fascinating place, it really is. But if you want to hear more about it, you've got to come to one of our nights here at the observatory. From here, I'm going to just turn the camera around and show you how far we've come. 150 million kilometers, a long way. Alrighty, next planet, Mars. Now, when I was a kid, Mars used to scare the absolute living crap out of me because my two evil older sisters made me listen to War of the Worlds. And that frightened the crap out of me and I honestly thought that Mars was out to get us. But now that I know better, Mars is a whole other world that humans are going to go explore, hopefully not stuff up. We've covered a distance of 228 million kilometers from over there to here. It takes one and a half Earth years, about 687 days to orbit around the sun. Its day is 37 minutes longer than planet Earth. So it's 24 hours and 37 minutes long. So if you're always searching for just that little bit of extra time to do stuff during the day, move to Mars. Next planet, Jupiter, is the next port of call. Speak of the devil, here it is. This paved area is the diameter of Jupiter. It's about 142,000 kilometers from one side to the other, but from the North Pole to the South Pole, it's actually slightly squashed. That's because it's got a very fast rotational rate. Its day is 10 hours long. So this thing really whips around. Jupiter is it's a big fluffy planet known as a gas giant. It has a collection of 67 moons. Four of them, of course, the Galilei satellites of Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. But on its surface, if you want to call it a surface, is a storm system that's been raging for over 400 years. Inside that, that storm system, you can fit about three Earths inside its area. So this thing is big, it's been raging for over 400 years, and the best name they can come up with is the Great Red Spot. I mean, really, come on, the Great Red Spot. That's a crap name. The Great Red Spot, not good enough. That's kind of weak. Um, let's go. We've just entered the Saturnian system. And this one here is good old Titan. Now Titan is covered in a thick atmosphere. They actually landed a space probe called the Huygens Lander. Now the Huygens Lander touched down on the surface of Titan. And what it saw was totally amazing. It saw bodies of liquid, but it wasn't liquid as we know it as water. It's actually liquid hydrocarbons. And here we come up to Saturn. This is Saturn here. You can line up the Earth nine times from one side to the other. And if it was hollow like a giant piggy bank, you could stuff in a uh, little over a thousand Earths inside it. So it is a big fluffy planet, no surface to stand on. Surface wind speeds here on Saturn exceed 1600 kilometers per hour. I mean, that's really booking along. The next planet along, this is gonna release a whole bunch of bum jokes. It's the planet of Uranus, not Uranus. If you want to pronounce it correctly, it's actually Uranus, which is the only planet that is named after a Greek god, the Greek god of the heavens, Uranus. Let's go to the Uranus system right now. Long way. Getting there. I'll wake you up when we get there. Here we are, fast approaching the Uranian system. Over there, somewhere about there. We've covered about 2.8 billion kilometers. And the planet of Uranus lies about 2.8 billion kilometers away from our sun. <laughs> out here, it takes Uranus 84 years to do one lap of our sun. It is cold and it is dark. We've now gone from the gas giant planets to the ice giant planets because this far out, the sun's heat has dropped off dramatically. So temperatures out here are extremely cold, at least minus 180, maybe minus 230 degrees out here. This is the one crazy thing about Uranus here is its axis is not straight up and down like this, like planet Earth and all the other planets. It's actually tilted on its side, like 89 degrees to the plane of the solar system. So technically, one side of the planet faces the sun for 41 years, and the other side is in darkness for 41 years. So its day-night cycle is 41 years long. Its rotation is about 16 hours. Next stop, sunny Neptune. You got some traveling music. Cue up the traveling music. Hey, I'm gonna do an impersonation of Voyager 2. It was a Voyager 1. One of the Voyagers, where it turned itself around and it aimed it back towards the solar system and took a photo, planet Earth, all the way down there. The very famous photo called the pale blue dot. That tiny little blue 
speck of dust suspended in a sunbeam is our home planet. And it's very small compared to the vastness of the cosmos as you can see. If I may suggest, read or listen to Carl Sagan wax lyrical about the pale blue dot. He says it, he writes it in his book, Pale Blue Dot, a vision of the human future in space. Oh shit, we've gone too far. <laughs> we missed Neptune. Reverse thrusters. Well, that's Neptune down there. We have now traveled over six billion kilometers from our sun. Out here, the sun is nothing but a very bright star. We were gonna to go to Pluto. It's too small, nothing to worry about. In fact, Pluto is smaller than our moon. It's kind of small and crummy, so it's not worth talking about. And those of you who get upset about Pluto being demoted, uh, too bad, get over it. Pluto didn't feel a thing. So there you go. So as a final sign off, next time you come out here, do the solar system walk, it's great. So from here on out, clear skies to all, and Hail Sagan, catch you next time. All you Firefly fans out there, check it out. Miranda. Miranda. So you probably think this guy's mad. We probably do, but you know, I don't care. So just whatever.